Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to use Amazon Bracket. The Amazon Bracket is a platform by Amazon for you to run codes on a real quantum computer or a quantum simulator. So the first step is to sign up for the so-called free tier at the AWS Amazon com and if you go to the page you will see this and you simply click here to create a free account so what you get for the free account is that you have one hour amazon bracket of free access to the quantum simulator So once you create the account, you could log in either as the root user or I am user. It's recommended to log in as I am user. After that, you would see the page and you click the services and you will see the quantum technology here, you would select Amazon bracket. Then it will lead you to a page that asks you to create data storage. You see the page like this, and you will create new data storage, also called bucket. So they would automatically give a name for the bucket you have to agree with their terms and condition and then hit the enable Amazon bracket button. So we create a bucket for you. Then you need to create a folder. The folder allow you to store your computational results. After that, it will lead you to a page that show you the quantum processing unit, such as D-Wave machine, ion and IonQ machine, two Rigetti machines, as well as two simulator. One is the state vector simulator. The other is the tensor network simulator. So, after that, you can create a Jupyter notebook instances by clicking the notebook and you see this orange button. You can click and what leads you to a form that you need to enter the name for the notebook instance and you have to enter the name and select the instance type. There are possible uh, options listed here. We will, for the moment, choose the first one, medium. Then you also need to select whether you want to enable or disable root access. It's recommended that you disable this. And there are also other options uh, regarding network and tax that you don't need to worry about at this moment. After you have created an instance, you will see this page that shows the status of the instance is pending. You wait for a few minutes and see that it becomes in service. Once it's become in service, you can click either open Jupyter or open Jupyter Lab. We'll select this first option, open Jupyter, and that leads you to a page. And you see a folder name, bracket example. If you click that, it expands the list of subfolders. There are many folders that contain uh, many examples. 
they are very useful tutorial for you to go through to learn quantum computations. So if I click getting started, I'll see these five notebooks. And that's click the first one, getting started. That leads us to this notebook, the getting started with Amazon bracket. And there are some explanation and some of the code. Uh, for example, this import the pi plot for the tool for you to plot, for example, histogram uh, and maybe circuit. And there are packages or module that you need to import, such as uh, circuit and local simulator. And first, uh, the examples show you to build a bell state with two qubit. So I could draw the circuit for you. Uh, it starts with two qubit label zero and one. And the circuit first apply a H gate on qubit zero. This is called Hardman gate. What it does is take a state of qubit in zero to a superposition of zero plus one. The square root is a normalization and it will take one to zero minus one. Sometimes we give the name plus to the first one and minus to the second one. Okay, then after that, you apply the C naught gate. The C naught is usually indicated with this notation. It acts on qubit zero as the control and qubit one as the target. Basically, what C naught does is it sent zero, zero to zero, 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 one to zero, one, one, zero to one, one, basically flip the second bit and one, one gets sent to one, zero. So in this example, after the first Hadamard gate, you have zero plus one for the first qubit. And for the second qubit, it is still a zero state. So I, for the moment, ignore the normalization. So this qubit zero, and this one is qubit one. So after the C naught, the zero, zero stays zero, zero. One, zero will become one, one because the second qubit would get flipped. If we put back the normalization is one over square root two. And this is the so-called bell state. And bell state has a lot of uh, applications such as teleportation, such as generating a random security key. So the next, the notebook would submit this circuit named Bell to local simulator. So what it does is you call local simulator assigned to the name device, and you basically uh, use device.run run this bell circuit and you assign the shot number and you take the result to store it here. So basically what it does is running this circuit and we know the state is zero zero plus one one over square of root two. And basically the number of shots is saying that you are going to measure all the qubit in zero one basis. And you see that there are only two components here and they have equal weight. So you have roughly probability of one half, you get the outcome to be zero, zero, and the other 50% of chance to get one, one. 
and basically the simulator basically throw a dice according to the probability and an output either zero zero or one one and collect the shots over thousand times and then collect the statistics you get the counts using result that measurement counts and you print out the count so this is a dictionary that shows for one one outcome you have this case 502 sh shots counted and for the zero zero you have 498 shots counted and the total is a thousand and you use a pipe plot to plot the histogram. So let's see here, zero, zero has 502 and one, one has 498 shots. Okay, so you may wonder where actually is the notebook located? It's located in the Amazon cloud. And so you run this through Amazon uh, and then connect to the simulator, the device. And you could also um, run the codes on real devices that uh, I showed you earlier. For example, on um, Rigetti or I am Q. Uh, Dway is a, a different uh, architecture using uh, annealing, so the code is uh, slightly different. You may then wonder if I don't want to have my code stored on the Amazon Cloud, can I, or how can I access bracket from local script or notebook? Here is how you do it. First, you need to uh, create secret credentials from the your AWS account. If you log into your account, if you click my security credentials, you will see this page. And you basically just hit this button to create a new access key. It basically would give you two keys. The first is access key ID and the second is secret key access key, secret access key. You store these two keys, uh, for example, in the file in your, under your local directory. I'm assuming this is a Linux system, it's under the home directory dot AWS slash credentials. So you basically store access key ID secret access key here. And the third one, session token is actually not needed for the moment. Once uh, you store that, uh, you are almost ready to run remotely. Another place to store credentials is this config file. You can store it here like this. Uh, the advantage is you could create a different profile, with different keys, uh, accessing different accounts. In order to run your codes and store results from simulators, Amazon bracket simulators, or on real devices, you need to assign or declare the region that you are associated with. The account associated with. You could write that in config file like this. For example, I have my account in US East one region, or you could define that in uh, the environment variable like this. So once you have all these, you are ready to run the code. To run the code, uh, you will need to have Python 3.7 or later. For example, uh, you could set up this in Ubuntu uh, to install Python 3.7. If you don't have in your system, 
and it's convenient also to set up virtual environment. You could uh, install the package if you do not have that in your system. Then you say virtual environment, py37, give it a name and the option that the Python is going to be 3.7. You do the source to activate the virtual environment. Next step is you need to install Amazon bracket. You could either download it from the GitHub and then use pip to install or directly use pip install Amazon bracket SDK. Uh, another package that you need uh, to allow you to process credentials is the Amazon Bozo3 package. You can install it like this. Use pip, pip install Bozo3. Once you have these packages installed, you're ready to write your code that can be executed uh, remotely. Here is an example code. So you have to import Bozo3 you import AWS device, import circuit, local simulator that we have seen earlier. Uh, here is how you um, process your credential. Your account ID equal to this, both of three resource, etc. And here is where you store the results. You assign the S3 folder this is where you created the bucket and the folder under the bucket and here is the circuit that we've seen before the halama gate um qubit zero and one uh, for all the qubit the initial stage is going to be zero and you apply the cena gate and you perform the shots. For example, we have seen this. You run this fail circuit using local simulator. You obtain the result and get the counts and print out the measurement counts. This is using the local simulator. We could also run an Amazon simulator. This is state vector simulator, you run the same circuit, but here you have to assign the, your S3 folder in order for you to store the shot, the counts, etc. So notice that uh, using local simulator, you don't need to have uh, the S3 folder specified unless you want to store the result there. Okay, so once you have run this example, you just use Python example py, and you see the output is similar to what we have before the measurement count counter, like count how many shots you get. Uh, with outcome one one and outcome zero zero, etc. So, I guess this is uh, the end of my presentation. I hope by now you will be able to create a Amazon AWS account to run Amazon Bracket and take advantage of the free hour you can use on their simulator. Okay, so I hope that you will be able to explore more on the quantum computing and take advantage of the quantum power. Thanks for watching.